This video was made in association with African Custom Knives. ACK is the leading U.S.-based purveyor of South African handmade cutlery. Head over to AfricanCustomKnives.com for exclusive deals on rare custom knives. What is up everybody and welcome. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at this JD Van Deventer Kenpachi. This knife comes to us from my personal collection and I am super stoked to finally be able to share it with you guys. Uh, I've had this knife for... hmm... Maybe about a month and a half. And I just haven't found the time to share it with you guys until now. But it's, you know, whenever I add something to collection, to the collection, it's always nice to uh, take a little bit of extra time with it and really let that honeymoon phase kind of pass so that I can get a really good feel for the knife. And I gotta say, guys, I got a real good feel for this knife. I purchased this from African Custom Knives, uh, sort of direct from G9, really. Uh, they picked up three of Van Deventer's Ken Patches from the show. Um, one was exactly like this, but with bronze. Uh, and then another one was a little bit dressier. And I almost got, went after the dressier one, but it ended up having bronze anodizing on the backspacer, which, of course, could not belong in my collection. Um, but I'm actually really happy this is the one I ended up with because, well, a number of reasons. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Before we hit the features and flaws, let's check out a quick size comparison this knife, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I expected it to be bigger or smaller. It's kind of the perfect size, really. Um, I think part of me in my head thought it was bigger. You know, I bought it sort of like before it was listed and whatever. Um, so uh, I wasn't quite sure how big it was. You can see here that the dimensions are really spot on with the PM2, right? It's a little bit thinner kind of in this region. Um, obviously a little bit more useful cutting edge towards the back here, but uh, overall pretty similar shape. I don't think I need to get too deep into there. Let's go ahead and see how much the knife weighs too uh, before I jump in. I don't think I've actually weighed this knife, guys, in the entire time that I've owned it. So let's, uh, let's see how it stacks up. All right, so this knife is on the heavier side. I'm gonna make a guess. I'm gonna say 5.65 ounces. Okay, obviously, I, I'm not a very good guesser of weight. Uh, at 4.9 ounces, um, it's a little bit lighter than I guess I expected, honestly. I would have, if you had made me bet 100 bucks, I would have said it was over 5 ounces for sure. Um, so that's good. That means it gives kind of a nice, hefty, solid feel in the hand, but ultimately won't actually weigh down your pocket too much. Now, I think a lot of that weight is coming from this full backspacer here. You can see this is uh, entirely of titanium construction. And it's really the full length all the way. It doesn't end here uh, at the lanyard. It actually dips below for the lanyard hole and comes all the way to the front here. So you guys can see um, it's a pretty heavy backspacer. Now, titanium, obviously going to be on the lighter side, especially compared to a lot of the stainless steel back bars that we're seeing in South African customs these days. Uh, but yeah, it's still pretty hefty. So I do feel like a lot of the weight comes from that, especially with these carbon fiber scales and relatively thin liners. Um, and then of course the blade has a bit of heft to it too. It's a bit thick or a bit on the thicker side. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the features and flaws on this knife. So the first thing that I want to talk about are the ergonomics. This knife feels super duper good in the hand. And uh, unlike some other knives that we've recently looked at on the channel, there's room for, for a bigger hand on this one as well. You'll see that the flipper tab does have that sort of um, downward curve, which means that you are going to be right up in there with your index finger, which is good. I don't want to be sliding up on this knife anytime soon. Um, but on the rear end here, you could see that uh, there's this bulge here that my pinky's kind of on. But so if I had a bigger hand, I could get all the way down here and it's still pretty comfortable, um, pretty filling. So that's how much extra room there is for a bigger hand. So overall, I think that the ergonomics are really good for any size hand and that's something that I can appreciate. The jimping, if you wanna call it that, on the back here, design-wise is meant to reflect the kind of spacing, the little squares and spacing that you see on the back spacer. Now, while from an aesthetic uh, standpoint, that's super sweet, doesn't really provide that much. You feel it, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's it's more grip than you'd have if there was no jimping, but like I'm still sliding along this, right? So it feels good, it's not uncomfortable or anything, but it does grab a lot of finger gunk and uh, 
it's just not the most useful. So I can appreciate it from an aesthetic standpoint, um, but you're not going to be bearing down on that anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, we are looking at a blade with a pretty steep hollow grind, although, again, it does have that thickness. So while it's going to make a great, you know, kind of everyday carry sort of knife, um, it wouldn't be my first choice if I had multiple options and I was going to slice some tomatoes. Um, I might pick something that's got a little bit thinner of a blade stock. But like I said, the hollow grind is pretty tall, so you have plenty of uh, thin edge, uh, sorry, thin bevel behind the edge so that you can, you know, slice through pretty much anything. So that's going to be efficient, and we do have just kind of a general drop point shape here as well. So the next thing that I'll talk about are these carbon fiber scales. Now, I just want to see if I can give you guys a really good perspective of the three-dimensionality of these scales. You can see that there's a lot of carving going on. So you have a really deep carve here. And then you have really deep uh, carving through the center here and then out the back in these three spaces. And uh, it feels super good, feels super cool to the touch, looks great. Big fan of the carving that he's done on this uh, uh, carbon fiber. And now there's one other feature about this carbon fiber that I really don't know how to describe on video. So Maybe I'm going to stand up and see if I can get it in the shot if you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. He has applied some sort of textured finish to this carbon fiber that I haven't experienced on any other knife. Now, that's not to say it doesn't exist and maybe you've experienced it before, but I personally have not. And I got to say, when I was getting the knife, I thought it was just kind of a matte finish, which it is a matte finish, but I thought it'd be smooth, you know, um, and it's not. And I'm so glad that it's not because this finish is so cool. I'm completely enamored by it. So let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, there you go. So you guys can see, look at the tip here. See how it's bumpy? See these bumps? Those are That's three dimensionality that you're seeing, not just the weave. Look at that. You see how it's kind of carved? I don't know what he did, but you can feel that and it's textured all the way through and it feels so good. It gives the knife grip. Uh, it just, it feels comfortable. It's such a neat, neat texture. Um, I'm a really big fan of that. So again, something that was unexpected, but that, that ended up surpassing any expectations that I had about what I thought I was getting. And you know, it's a lot of, it can be tough guys buying knives online, especially when you're spending 700, a thousand bucks on a knife to kind of like buy it based on pictures alone can be tough. And there are a lot of times where you get a knife and there are surprises. And I got to say, Probably the majority of the time, the surprises are like, oh, it's like that. Um, but every once in a while, you get surprised in a good way, and you're like, oh, it's like that. Um, and that's really how I felt on this knife in a couple different areas. But the carbon fiber was super cool. I'm such a big fan. Now, if we take another look at this titanium backspacer, you can see he's done a textured finish, kind of a textured smooth, textured smooth combo here. Pretty cool. I like that. And then he's done blue through the grooves. I like that. Nice touch. As we saw before, there is a lanyard option. Now, my favorite thing about this knife is very curious because it's such a small detail and it's really not that impactful to the knife overall, but man, wow, I'm just such a big fan. Check this out. On the flipper tab, instead of jimping, he's done knurling. Now, this is something that I went back and looked at his other knives, and a lot of his flippers have this. Like, probably all of them, quite frankly. This is kind of a signature thing that he does, and it's not to say that other makers haven't done knurling instead as well, but JD is the only maker that's in my sort of realm of my playground right now who's doing this, and it is my favorite thing ever. It is more comfortable than jimping. It looks 10 times cooler than jimping. And if I could replace the jimping on every single one of my knives with this knurling, I would do it in a heartbeat. You guys can tell maybe I'm a bit of a fan of knurling. That's what I've got here on my cap spin as well. And uh, I've got some other objects laying around. as well. Here's some, uh, some tops from African Custom Knives knurling. I love knurling. It's super cool. And so to have knurling on the flipper tab, really awesome. Gives a great grip. And for what is otherwise not the best flipper tab shape, you can see it's pointy, it's thin. It's kind of awkward, to be quite frank. Um, it's, you know, you don't really want to get up in there in terms of light switch, even though that does work. Um, it does function very well as push button, obviously. But uh, 
it's just kind of an awkward flipper tab shape, but it's comp- I don't even care. I completely let that go when uh, when I saw this uh, knurling. I just love the way it feels. I love flipping this knife. This is one of my favorite knives to just sit at my desk and fidget with. So continuing to speak about the action, this has that typical South African thwack, right? This is like right up there with, with your Thorburns. This is a little bit louder because, you know, because Thorburn. Um, but this... Uh, Ken Patchy, I gotta say, when I got it, I reached out to uh, Nolan and Nathan and African Custom Knives and uh, and Chase. Sorry, I always I always leave out Chase. It's because he's not one of the brothers. But um, I'm sorry, Chase. That's so mean. But uh, yeah, I reached out to them right away, and I was like, holy crap, this thing has completely blown me away. And I said to Nathan, this knife is really on the level of Thorburn. I mean. You know, it's not, it doesn't have a mariachi, stippled, you know, beautiful bolster or anything, but the quality and just the build and the way it feels, it's right up there. It's not quite, you know, Thorburns are borderline perfect in a lot of ways. Not every Thorburn is, is that great, but, you know, a, a great or amazing Thorburn is really as good as it gets. Um, and so JD is knocking on that door. I'd say this knife is about 90 to 95% of what this knife is saying. And I don't say that lightly. I take my percentages seriously. I would use uh, 10% to describe it as well if that's how I felt. Um, so guys, it's, it's really up there. If you've been kind of on the fence about one of JD's bigger flippers, um, you know, I have his smaller frame lock flipper here, uh, which I can't use right now because the pivot's loose and I don't have a pivot tool for it. But, uh, you know, I feel like this is what's in a lot of people's pocket if they own a JD Vandeventer. Um, I have some of his little fixed blades around somewhere, somewhere as well. Let me see. You know, and you, you got something uh, small like this little fixed blade. So, you know, I have some of his other knives and, and I, I just never had like a full size flipper like this. So if you've been on the fence, I got to tell you. I can't really speak for his older older stuff, you know what I mean? All all custom knife makers improve with every single knife. That's, that's an opinion that I have. Um... And this one's fairly new, being from the 2017 or from G9. I guess that's all I have to say because the number changes every year. But um, yeah, guys, I'm absolutely enamored with this thing. It's super, super duper up to the quality level, or just under the quality level of Thorburn. So big fan. Obviously, as we continue to speak about the action, it completely drops shut. Super clean, super smooth, no questions asked. Very consistent. As I say that, it gets. <laughs> A little bit slowed down. That's what happens when you flip these knives a lot, though. They get dried out a little bit. Um, but yeah, super clean action. And then another thing that I love is this lock bar. You can see he's got this kind of texturing to the uh, edge of the lock bar. He's kind of cut it out here so that you can get your thumb in there. Really, really comfortable to disengage this lock bar. No lock stick at all. Pretty short lock up, to be frank, but no lock stick or anything like that. Really smooth. And then um, a couple other features I want to talk about here. We do have a two-tone pivot, which was uh, clearly done very well. He anodized it blue and then went back and took away the finish on the top edges there to give that silver. And then he's got uh, – I'm going to stand up to show this to you guys because there are a couple of cool things going on on the inside here. First, he's got jeweling done on the liners. Oh, it's very dirty in there. Let me, let me get this cleaned out here so you guys can see, get some of this dust. All right. So you can see we've got this uh, jeweling – on the inside of the liners. Definitely something I appreciate. Wish more makers would take the time to do this. Um, somebody who does this a lot, I think, is Will Moon. It's just a nice touch. You know, put it, put forth a little effort for the inside, and, and I'll always appreciate that. And then something that JD's known for is, check this out, this pattern. See that in there on the back side of the uh, backspacer? So what he's doing there, and, and I have, I've literally not talked to JD about this, so please take it with a grain of salt, but from what I know, he's taking the backspacer, he's anodizing it the blue in the background, and then he's taking, I don't know, a chisel or a file or a dremel or something, and he's just kind of chipping, chipping away at the finish with the blue, and that leaves silver, and then he's going back and he's doing lower voltage anodization, so all the chips get filled in with the color, and then he's going back one more time and chipping it again so that you get the silver, and it's super cool. Check that out. And I've seen this on a lot of his knives, on the insides and outsides, but uh, I was really, normally he's got bronze in there, which I don't like, but I was happy to see on mine, there's no bronze, it's just blue, purple, and silver. So that's super sick. And guys, little touches like that, they go miles with me. That's such a big deal for me. I always appreciate the little touches. I, I just think 
if you can show me as a maker that you care enough to do the things that most people won't notice, you know, this is a big thing that I have with Larebo, uh, Jason Overall at Larebo Knives. If you can put the time and attention and care into the little details, it's going to make it one of my favorite knives um, because guys, you know, the market is insane right now. Like you can buy anything at any price at any time from anyone, anywhere, and anybody can get an amazing custom knife. So to separate yourself apart as a maker, you really have to go that extra mile if you want me to spend those exorbitant amounts on your knives. And I have to say, JD earned it with this one. He earned every freaking penny. Um, and the last thing I'll say is one negative thing. The clip on this, not so great. It is titanium, kind of a tumbled finish, which I like, but it's got that nub thing going on. And the tension's really strong, like probably the strongest titanium clip I've ever felt. So if I could tune that a little bit better, I would. I would send it back to him because um, this is two hands in and out every time. This is a bitch to get in and out of the pocket. You know, it's it's really my only issue with the knife, so I've just been kind of putting up with it, but it does suck. This clip is probably one of the least fun clips to use that I've kind of really kept on any knife. Um, it's a real struggle to get it in and out, but the good news is it's not going anywhere. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I, I just, I really enjoyed owning this knife still do. Obviously it's not going anywhere. This is not one that I'm going to sell. Um, and I really just am really happy to get to say positive things about JD and really show that he's really coming up to the tippy top of like what you can get, especially for the $750 price point. Are you kidding me? This thing is absolutely amazing. So Thanks so much for watching, guys. I won't waste any more of your time. If you'd like to see beautiful pictures of this Kempachi or any of these other awesome knives, you can do so by following me on Instagram at TovarishWorks. And if you'd like to send me an email, you can do so by reaching me at TovarishWorks at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.